Good morning. I mentioned to Wade and Sue a while ago, if it's going to waste time being cold, it needs to go ahead and snow. I'm all for it, yeah. That way we can go slide down the hills on pasteboard boxes and have all that fun. Um, got some birthdays today. Uh, Joseph came. He was like 43 years old today, right, Joseph? How old? 14. 14. So, uh, Miss Joanne, we're not talking about Miss Joanne, how old she will be, but it's her birthday yesterday, was it, Miss Joanne? Anybody else have birthdays? Nobody that wants to admit it, right? Well, Joseph, you stand up. Could we sing happy birthday to you and Miss Joanne? Okay. Happy birthday. prepare for worship as the acolytes bring the light of the Lord into the room. By way of announcements, the Administrative Council, I believe, meets at 3 p.m. today, and that's going to be in the Fellowship Hall. So uh, uh, be sure to, everybody's welcome to the Administrative Council meeting. I mean, if you don't have to be there and you should show up, I will, you know, I won't question, you know, anything. But uh, everybody's welcome to those that's needed to let you know that everybody can come and be part of them. Wileen and I would like to thank the church for this uh, beautiful and wonderful Pastor Appreciation Month. And thank you so much for, uh, we both feel it's a, it, it's a distinct privilege to be able to make this part of our journey with you and, and your church. Wileen, would you like to say something? Yeah, yeah. You could have shared some of the secrets, but... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. Never, if she's quiet, never punch her. You know she <laughs> Christmas Eve play practice for kids fifth grade and under will be today at 5 p.m. Be snacks and a short program in the fellowship hall for parents who bring the kids. See Katie Hunter or text that number in your bulletin if you have any questions. Shoe boxes are due today, and uh, we will deal with that uh <coughs> We will do the blessing of the shoe boxes in a little while, and so Amy will uh, will will sort of recap all that we've done. And so it's just a <coughs> it, you start adding up these numbers; it's a pretty impressive kind of thing. Um, the live nativity is it, in the bulletin. It says sixteenth and seventeenth. It's actually seventeenth and eighteenth. So that's uh, your pastor dropping the ball there. and uh, But uh, Ginger Scruggs is going to do the costumes and 
our, our costumes, Carol and Bradford, uh, food contributions, gender scrubs. Brenda McKay is going to be the animal wrangler kind of person. And guys, um, I guess we can call Jim out there. Y'all have done this before. Uh, evidently, you're going to build some sets or some things. So, uh, so uh, we'll just be available and bring a hammer and nails and whatever you need. If Tri-State Food Pantry needs volunteers to help unload trucks. Um, there's some pretty powerful statistics out there about uh, the increase in people that are going hungry. And so, you know, take note of those things, but also know that that Tri-State Food Pantry for a long time has been taking care of a lot of people. And uh, all they generally ask of people is for people to come and help unload and, and, and prepare boxes. So if you can do that, please, please call Harry. And uh, if you're looking for a place to be of Christian service, Yes. Camp Lookout Christmas Camp. Okay, Michelle, we, we're fixing to get to it. December 17th and 18th begins Saturday at 2 p.m. and Sunday at, end Sunday at 2 p.m. for third through sixth graders. It's $105 and you register at camplookout.com. Got it? Okay. If you have children who want to train as acolytes, please give names and contact info to Wileen. Uh, also, in service this morning, if you have a prayer request or a joy that uh, needs announcing, please write it down on the prayer card from the pew and put it in the offering plate during the collection time to be read. Um, I have a couple of sad announcements. This uh, Bunk Forrester. Well, it's not sad. It's he went went home to be with the Lord, and the great reunion is taking place. And uh, but the sad part is, you know, you got kids and grandkids and great grandkids that are going to miss bunk. And uh, uh, Sharon said that we'll prepare a meal for the Forrester family Wednesday after the services. Uh, please have your food at church by one thirty. And visitation is at Moore Funeral Home from 4 to 8 Tuesday, and the funeral will be Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Okay. And uh, uh, the Cain family, uh, those grandchildren have lost their nana, I believe. And, um, and that's Andrea's stepmom. And so they're down in South Georgia, I think, or so. Where are they? Uh, okay. So pray for that family. The kids are here today, and uh, I, I tell you what, it was uh, 1967 when my grandmother died. I still miss her. Still miss her. So, uh, uh, but I also know that at the end of this life, because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we will never be eternally separated. We will always be with each other. So uh, that's uh, about all the announcements I can think of to make. Uh, so uh, as we get ready for the opening hymn, America, page 697, I'd like to recognize the people who served in the, in the service. And if you would, uh, if, as I call the branches of service off, if you served in that, would you please stand? Let's start with the Army. Did you, anybody serve in the Army? There we go. How about the Navy? Anybody serve in the Navy? Okay. Uh, the Air Force? Air Force, okay. The Marine Corps, anybody serve in the Marines? How about the Coast Guard? Anybody serve in the Coast Guard? Uh, while you're standing, I would just like to say on behalf of the church, thank you for your service. I understand that we give our lives in different ways, and you gave the hours and the minutes and the days and the years of your life so that we could remain a free people. And as we sing this song, 
we'd like to sing it to you. Okay? page 839 and join me in the psalm. This psalm has a name. It was called the Hallel. Uh, and it was the psalm that was read on the eve of Passover. And Jesus probably was reading this psalm just before he went out into the Garden of Gethsemane and faced the trial that night. It's a song of victory, by the way. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord does value. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Save us, we beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Lead the vessel procession with branches of the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. You join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, if you would, as you go to wish each other the peace of the Lord, take note of these people who are veterans who have served. Also, if you are a long-term member here, we've got some new families in here. Take note of them and speak to them as well. Y'all, reach out and wish each other the peace of the Lord. Get up here. <laughs> you prepare an offering for the Lord. I've seen this around a couple of times. It said that. Uh, I'm not thankful because I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm thankful. So as we approach Thanksgiving, let's give the Lord thanks for the way that he's blessed our lives and let's return unto him a portion of that which he's given. Lord, we do give you thanks that you have blessed us with material uh, wealth that, that we could make a difference in this world. Lord, we know that part of it is you taking care of us, but we know the other half of it is you taking care of others. Lord, as we, as we remit this offering to you, we pray that you would bless it, that you would multiply it and magnify it, that we might truly be your work on top of this mountain. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Oh, I'll come for the Lord in prayer today. One card uh, says, We pray that UT fans realize that all the points scored yesterday cannot be applied to the previous week's score. <laughs> Tom Pounds or Bob had something to do with that, I think. I, I'll, I'll catch whoever that is. But hey, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I've said this and I've said this that. You know, football is almost a religion in the South, but I've told church after church after church, look, folks, if 15 minutes after your team loses, you're still broke up about it, you need to get a life. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun, okay? It's supposed to be fun. Another uh, beautiful uh, thing was Debbie and uh, Gracie and Clayton, yeah. They had a great trip to visit Jonathan and Dallas and in in Iowa, uh, Jonathan and Dallas in Iowa. She said it was cold up there before it was cold down here, so uh, we we got a day or two extra warmth down here. Pray for Weston; he has flu and strep. And then Isabella <coughs> Velez, she got, had a shoulder injury at wrestling practice. Atticus had one at wrestling practice. But something you probably didn't know, six of the six of the middle school wrestlers, I don't know what, Riley, what y'all got, 10-person team? Something like that? Is it you, 10-person? So six of them are connected with this church. So don't mess with these people, okay? <laughs> So we're proud of them, but we will pray for Isabella and uh, and uh, and that injury. Um, we need to pray for Nora Isabella DiMartino. She's born four weeks early, a great-granddaughter of Elsie Everett and the granddaughter of Susan, uh, Elsie's daughter. And Donna requests that we pray for, for them today. So um, we need to pray for the family of Bump Forrester. And uh, more than pray, just be there and be available for them. Pray for Melda. Her arthritis has gotten her down. Marlene Morgan's been in the hospital this week, so pray for Marlene. Tony Collier is in rehab, so pray for Tony. And um, <clears throat> we, uh, Riley said pray for the family of uh, Buck Forrester. He is in a better place. Yes, he is, Riley. He sure is. So remember that. Family of Debbie Brown, pray for them. Pray for traveling mercies for Andrea Kane. She's gone to her stepmother's funeral, and so pray for that. Um, you know, uh, continue to pray for Charlie and Claudia and... Uh, you know, it hurts to lose people, but it lessens the hurt to know that Jesus Christ has made a way for us, a place for us to go and a way for us to get there. So if you would, um, let's bow our heads and pray. Mighty God, as we do bow our heads before you today, we thank you for these requests. We Thank you, Lord, for these people who've been named. We pray that you would have your way and your will in every situation. We thank you, dear God, for brand new life. We thank you, Lord, for life renewed. We thank you, Lord, that as the scripture says today, not a hair of our head will ultimately perish. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that, and we thank you for what you've done for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray today, we pray for those who are recovering. We pray for those who are sick. We ask that your healing would be with them and upon them. Lord, we pray for our nation this day. We ask that you would bless it with your wisdom, that you would shower it with your mercy and your peace. Lord, as we pray today, we remember these among us who have taken their actual lives and exchanged them for freedom. Lord, uh, 
though they live among us still, they did give up the hours and the minutes and the seconds, the days and the years. And that what, that's what makes up our lives. Lord, thank you for those sacrifices. Thank you, Lord, for all those that lived and loved and cared in this way. We remember, Lord, on this day to give you thanks for all that you've given. Thank you for the roof over our head, the shoes on our feet, the food on our table, the water we drink, the air we breathe, the world we see. We give you thanks for it, Lord. We remember to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
First reading this morning is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13, the New International Reader's Version. Brothers and sisters, here is a command we give you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep away from every believer who doesn't want to work and make trouble. Keep away from any believer who doesn't live up to the teaching you receive from us. You know now, you know how you should follow our example. We worked when we were with you. We didn't eat anyone's food without paying for it. In fact, it was just the opposite. We worked day and night. We worked very hard so that we wouldn't cause any expense to any of you. We worked even though we have the right to receive help from you. 
We did it in order to be a model for you to follow. Even when we were with you, we gave you a rule. We said, anyone who won't work shouldn't be allowed to eat. We hear that some people among you don't want to work and are making trouble. They aren't really busy. Instead, they are bothering others. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, so we strongly command people like that to settle down. They have to earn the food they eat. Brothers and sisters, don't ever get tired of doing what is good. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Luke 21, verses 5 to 19. Some of Jesus' disciples were talking about the temple. They spoke about how it was decorated with beautiful stones and with gifts that honor God. The Jesus said, Do you see all this? The time will come when not one stone will be left on top of the other. Every stone will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? Jesus replied, keep watch. Be careful that you are not fooled. Many will come in my name. They will claim, I am he, and they will say, the time is near. Do not follow them. Do not be afraid when you hear about wars and about fighting against rulers. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then Jesus said to them, Nation will fight against nation. Kingdom will fight against kingdom. In many places there will be powerful earthquakes. People will go hungry. There will be terrible sicknesses. Things will happen that will make people afraid. There will be great and miraculous signs from heaven. But before all this, people will arrest you and treat you badly. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison. You will be brought to kings and governors. All this will happen to you because of my name. And so you will be witnesses about me. But make up your mind not to worry ahead of time about how to stand up against, stand up for yourselves. I will give you words of wisdom. None of your enemies will be able to stand, withstand them or prove them wrong. Even your parents, brothers, sisters, relatives, and friends will hand you over to the authorities. The authorities will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. But not, a head on, but not a hair on your head will be harmed. Remain strong in the faith, and you will receive eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. We come to the near end of the Christian year, a complete year of education. Uh, a balanced view of the advent of Christ, what it means with his, his promise coming, with his advent, his birth, the epiphany of Christ, the world coming to know Christ, the suffering of Christ during Lent, the resurrection of the Christ that we observe during Easter, and then in June we begin the season of Kingdom Tide where we're talking about the values and principles that that Christianity brought into the world, the, the values and principles that make this faith different than the other faiths of the world, uh, that make this kingdom different than the kingdoms of any man anywhere. Um, but as we are wrapping this up, Jesus is getting in what people would call these end time prophecies and I'd like to clear up something about this passage. There's three slices of time in here. There is this time up until 70 AD where the emperor of Rome actually did come in and tear down the temple and you've seen what's left of it on TV if you have seen pictures from the Wailing Wall long about the Passover. Um, uh, that was a foundational wall of the old temple, and that's all that's left. So that part of what Jesus said here was complete in 70 AD. Then he's talking about stuff that will happen in the interim between then and his coming back. And he said, you know, it's going to be the world, just a regular old world. Wars, rumors of war, upset. Fear, but you don't be afraid. You know, you don't be afraid out there through the centuries of all this stuff. You know, 
God's got you. You don't need to be afraid of all this stuff. Uh, and then he comes back and he says something that they didn't teach us in preacher school. Okay? Nobody taught it to us in evangelism school. Okay? If you were going to fill up people, if you were going to convert people to the faith, this is what you would not do. Okay? Jesus, in this passage, looks at his disciples and says that believers would be arrested and persecuted by governments. They would be tried by kings and governors and religions. They would be betrayed by family and friends. Some of them would be executed and they will be hated by all people. Now it would be hard to get somebody to join that, right? But the thing about Jesus is he never lied to us. Is that this is a sacrificial faith. This is a faith where we're called beyond our own comfort into doing something that is of such a magnitude that only God can completely know what's happening. What we're called to do is live out our little part of it, live out our little time of it, and trust him when he says that even though we may be hated by all people, even though some will be executed, oh, by the way, the number one, the top persecuted faith in the world are Christians today. Uh, even though we'd be betrayed by family and friends, tried by kings and governors, arrested and persecuted by governors, even though all this would happen, even if we died, we would not perish. It's an amazing thing to say. He said, some of you put to death, but you won't perish. Not a hair on your head will perish. You know, Jesus talks about two different things when he's talking about death. He's talking about death, and then he's talking about eternal death. He's talking about death and physical death, and he's talking about eternal life. So, I'm reading this that Jesus said in 33 A.D., and he tells his immediate followers that this is going to be the world's attitude toward them. Then how can you account by 325 A.D. The Christian faith had become of the, the faith of the empire that crucified Jesus. How do you account for that? In 300 short years... This nucleus of faith that came out of these 12 people, this absolutely revolutionized the Near Eastern world. It was spreading into Europe and everywhere it went, in spite of the fact that it was hated, it was persecuted, it, in fact, that it split up families, that people were arrested and people were put on trial. Still, this faith was conquering the world that was hating it. How did that happen? Well, as Buzz read that, uh, Christianity brought three things to the world that's very important. One of them, it brought the idea, the, the ultimate idea of human freedom. Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus came to set people free. He set me free. And in return, I enslaved myself to him. That's what Jesus came to do, is to set people free from the fear of death that they might choose the relationship with God. So freedom is one of those things that is absolutely a hinge point of Christianity. That's one of the great gifts that God brought. And the other thing is, is a work ethic. Did you hear that when Buzz read it? That, look, you believers don't have anything to do with those gossipy, busybody believers that hanging around us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? 
Don't have anything to do with him. Be busy. I like what it says. It says, uh, uh, it said, you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you. We did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but we toil and labor. We work night and day so that we might not burden any of you. Did we do this to give you an example to imitate? Uh, for we gave you this command, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For if we, for we hear that some of you are living in idleness, busy bodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and start earning their own living. That's one of the remarkable things about Christianity is its work ethic. It's work ethic. But there's something else that's remarkable about it. But, you know, the, the why of that Christian work ethic, I don't think sometimes we get around to. Acts 20, 35 says, By hard work we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Jesus said that. Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to the family of faith. Timothy 6.18 says, They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous, ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, taking hold of the life that really is life. Second Thessalonians says, work quietly and earn our own living. Do not be weary in doing right. But Ephesians clears up the whole thing, the why behind the generosity, the why behind the work ethic. Let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so that, okay? Don't you get that? Work honestly with your own hands so that you may have something to share with the needy. How did Christianity overcome the prejudice of a pagan world? How did it, how did it overcome the prejudice and the bias in every community that it was planted in? It's really simple. Wherever Christianity was planted, it gave, it worked, it gave, and it took care of the poor. The Roman Empire could not get rid of Christianity because Christians had become the welfare system. There was no way that the people would let the Christians be extinguished. So we think about that today, and... Beth did that sermon, the children's sermon about this little box. God knows every little piece in this little box. He knows every little person that that's going to. I chose to really think about this today. You know, how did, how did the church, even though it was living in the midst of a prejudicial society, how did it end up overwhelming the pagan religions of the world? Because it worked hard, it offered the freedom of Christ, and it loved its neighbor as itself. That's how. And that's how God tells us that we are to have a good name today, is to work hard to share what we have with those who have less. Amy, if you would come, I would like for you to... I got to read this first before we leave. She's going to say what she's got to say, but you ready for this? 350 hair ties, 24 packs of colored pencils, 36 pairs of work gloves, 24 baseballs, 10 sewing kits with fabric for each one, thanks Brenda. 81 bars of soap, 20 bandanas, 500 note cards, 20 coloring books, 48 drawstring backpacks, 60 pop budget, 
bubble fidget toys, 14 mini wet bags, 100 toothbrushes, 6 deodorants, 50 friendship bracelets, 36 jars of Play-Doh, 16 boxes of chalk, 20 pencil pouches, 120 pens, 18 flashlights, 48 spiral notebooks, 108 pairs of scissors, 12 packs of playing cards, reusable fork spoon, 31 musical instruments, 150 pencils, 48 boxes of crayons, 56 princess crowns, 72 water colored paint sets, 160 marbles, 40 burlap bags, and 24 magnetic drawing boards. That's you. That's you. And it ain't just here. It's every time we turn around. Y'all are living out that charge of the Thessalonican church. You're living out this beautiful thing that God made us for. You're declaring the possibility of freedom to the world. You're working hard, and you're sharing what you have with those who have less. They tell us in preacher school that one of the most important questions we can ask is, to determine the value of our church. They said, what would happen if tomorrow, all of a sudden, your church just did not exist in the community? Would it really make a difference? If this one disappeared, it would make a difference. Uh, you got something you want to say before we bless this? I just want to say thank you so much. We we did more boxes this year than we did. We did way more boxes this year than we did the last. I think I have roughly around 190 boxes. My goal is 200. So thank you so much. I'm already brainstorming for next year. So get ready. I'm going to give you up for December off. <laughs> um, I just I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Sunday school class that helped me pack boxes one Sunday. Thank you to Brenda and Sandra and Debbie. I mean, I can't thank you guys enough. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Amen. Is it really more of a blessing to give than it is to receive? Absolutely. Amen. Even more blessed to give than it is to receive. These are the words of our Lord Jesus. I am, I just got to tell you, how thankful and privileged I feel to be part of what y'all are doing in this world. You are a beautiful and a wonderful church. You are the body of Christ. Lord knows that a little soul somewhere is going to receive this box. For us, there is this blanket of anonymity, but God knew the person that will receive this box before they were ever formed in their mother's womb. Truly. And the Lord at least has this plan for them and much more. And I pray that as these boxes go into these little hands, that the love of God becomes evident to each person. I want to thank you for the way you love your neighbor as yourself, the way you obey the Lord. Would you reach your hands this way and let's bless these boxes. Be thinking about each of these boxes is going to the soul. Dear Lord, we pray your blessing upon each box. Lord, we pray your blessing upon each person that will receive it. God, you've already blessed those of us who've done it. Lord, continue to bless those who, who, who finish this project out. But Lord, may salvation come. Lord, may victory come. Lord, may peace and hope come into the hearts of those that receive this. Lord, we pray and anoint these boxes with your blessing that your blessing would also go within each block, box. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to sing a hymn. 526. 526.